you spit venom? No. Can you summon an army of spiders? No, Ned. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Marvel bromances. Are you Tony Stank? Yes, this is, this is Tony Stank. You're in the right place. Thank you for that! For this list, we'll be going over the best male friendships in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. To be clear, these have to be between characters who aren't actually brothers, like Thor and Loki. Nor can they be mentor father-son type deals as with Peter and Tony. Is there a bromance we missed? Make new connections in the comments. Number 10. Loki Laufeyson and Mobius Mobius Given that he's a total narcissist, Loki can be a tough god to get along with. He's frequently at odds with his own family. You just couldn't stay away, could you? Everything was fine without you. Asgard was prospering. You've ruined everything. However, Time Variance Authority agent Mobius M. Mobius manages to not only get along with the mischievous Prince of Asgard, but become fast friends with him. Mobius has studied Loki variants and knows how to handle Loki's flamboyant personality and deflections. Plus, he's just such a nice guy that even Loki can't help liking him. While temporal shenanigans have led to a change in their relationship, we look forward to them becoming besties all over again. What are you talking about? Who are you? What's your name? Boots on the ground now, archives. Who are you? Number 9. Tony Stark and Bruce Banner As two of the most scientifically minded members of the Avengers, Tony and Bruce naturally get along. Unless Selvig has figured out how to stabilize the quantum tunneling effect. Well, if he could do that, he could achieve heavy ion fusion at any reactor on the planet. Finally, someone who speaks English. Is that what just happened? For one, no one else can seem to understand them when they're using big scientific terminology. While Tony is naturally as annoying and provocative with Bruce as he is with nearly everyone else, the two of them share a strong bond. Well, I promise this stress-free environment, no tension, no surprises. Ow! Hey! Nothing? You don't make a killer super robot, or two, or hang out with wizards with just any of your friends after all. There's no time for a thing. That's the thing right there. Let's go. Shot. Dude, you're embarrassing me in front of the wizards. I'm sorry, I, I... Basically, these two are science bros for life and beyond. Number 8. Stephen Strange and Wong Speaking of wizards, Doctor Strange can be kind of a hard guy to like. Status, Billy? 1977. Oh, please. I hate you. Oh! Feels so good. An overachieving, selfish perfectionist for most of his life, his training in the mystic arts hits few roadblocks, and one of them is interim librarian Wong. Oh, you know, people used to think that I was funny. Did they work for you? All right, well, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you for the books and for the horrifying story and for the threat upon my life. The two of them may butt heads, but Wong always has Doctor Strange's back, just as Strange always has his. Also, we like to think that these two bonded over a mutual love of Beyonce. No matter what time or reality they're in, this duo is magic whenever they're on screen together. Number 7. Scott Lang and Luis These two ex-cons were former cellmates, and to hear Luis tell it, they became fast friends while inside. Because when I first met Scotty, he was in a bad place. And I'm not talking about cell block D. His wife had just filed for divorce. And I was like, damn, homie, she dumped me when you're on lockup? And he was like, yeah, I know. I thought I was going to be with her forever. But now I'm all alone. And I was like, damn, homie, you know what? You got to chin up because you'll find a new partner. But you know what? I'm Luis. And he says, you know what? I'm Scotty. And we're going to be best friends. Okay, hold on, hold on. Though we'll take that with a little grain of salt given how prone to exaggeration Luis can be. Still, even after they both get out, they're always there to help each other out. Whether it's finding work or just hanging out while Scott is under house arrest. Thanks for picking me up, brother. Well, you know, you think I'm gonna miss my celly getting out? Heck, if it weren't for their friendship and Luis's quantum van, half the universe would still be dead. Now that's true friendship. Number 6. Peter Parker and Ned Leeds Peter Parker may be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, but even he needs friends. He's also a total dork. Luckily, he has found a best bud who's on his same wavelength. Should probably stop staring before he gets creepy, though. Too late. You guys are losers. 
But then why do you sit with us? Because I don't have any friends. He and Ned are always hanging out, whether it's talking about girls, Peter's work as Spider-Man, or just broing out about how cool Legos are. Join me and together, we'll build my new Lego Death Star. What? So lame. No way, that's awesome. How many pieces? 3,803. Insane. I know. Ned is also Peter's backup when it comes to covering for his super-powered friend, creating distractions and acting as his guy in the chair to provide support when Peter is in the field. Hey, can I be your guy in the chair? What? Can you know how there's a guy with a headset telling the other guy where to go? Like, like if you're stuck in a burning building, I could tell you where to go because there'd be screens around me and I could you know, swivel around them because I could be your guy in the chair. Number five, Harold Happy Hogan and Tony Stark. Let's be honest, we've all wished we were happy at some point, pun absolutely intended. And who wouldn't want to be Tony Stark's go-to buddy for everything from cheeseburgers to boxing lessons? Sorry, what the hell was that? Sure, from the outside their friendship can look a little one-sided, considering Happy works for Tony, but it's clear that Tony really cares for Happy. Sunday night's PBS, Downton Abbey. That's a show he thinks it's elegant. He did challenge a terrorist to a fight after Happy got hurt. He even knows Happy's taste in period dramas. And Happy knows and looks after not only Tony, but everyone Tony cares about, from his family to Peter Parker. Number four, Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers. It's only fitting that the two Captain Americas, Captains of America, would be friends. Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers meet by chance while running laps in Washington, D.C., and they immediately bond over their military backgrounds and catching Steve up on pop culture. Marvin Gaye, 1972, Trouble Man soundtrack. Everything you missed, jammed into one album. I'll put it on the list. Sam is willing to stick by Steve no matter what, whether it's an insurrection within S.H.I.E.L.D. or a division within the Avengers themselves. If we call Tony, oh, he won't believe us. Even if he did. Who knows if the Accords will let him help. We're on our own. Maybe not. I know a guy. Their witty banter and easy friendship are helped by the fact that they're so alike. Heroic, brave, and kind. No wonder Steve saw fit to pass his shield on to Sam. How does it feel? Like it's someone else's. It isn't. Number three, Rocket and Groot. We feel like it's weird that one of the most wholesome male friendships in the MCU is between a talking tree and raccoon. Don't drink fountain water, you idiot. That's disgusting. <laughs> yes, you did. I just saw you doing it. Why are you lying? But it is. Rocket may be cantankerous, and he does frequently insult his linguistically challenged buddy, yet he clearly cares for Groot. The two of them are partners even before we meet them, and he's devastated when he thinks Groot dies. Both times. No, no, no. Groot. No. Groot, for his part, sacrifices his life for Rocket, and his younger selves seem to look at Rocket like a friend or a vuncular figure. We'll let Groot explain himself. We are Groot. Couldn't have said it better ourselves. Number two, Tony Stark and James Rhodey Rhodes. Tony may be good friends with others, but his best friend is Rhodey. They complement each other perfectly. You should get lost. I was here first. Get a roof. <laughs> I thought you were out of one-liners. That's the last one. You kicked ass back there, by the way. Thank you, you too. Tony helps Rhodey loosen up, while Rhodey helps keep Tony focused and keeps him in touch with his better nature. Not only is their banter hilarious, with Rhodey's dry humor bouncing off Tony's more outlandish style perfectly, but they're also there for each other during tough times, too. So last time you got a good night's sleep. Einstein slept three hours a year. Look what he did. People are concerned about you, Tony. I'm concerned about you. Rhodey helps Tony deal with his PTSD, while Tony is there for Rhodey during his rehabilitation. They're friends right up until the end. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Korg and Meek. Never have a rock man and a bug with knife arms been better friends. My name is Korg. I'm kind of like the leader in here. Uh, I'm made of rocks, as you can see, but don't let that intimidate you. You don't need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. <laughs> Just a little rock, paper, scissor joke for you. This is my very good friend over here, Meek. Thor Odinson and Heimdall. 
Heimdall sees all, but it doesn't take his vision to appreciate his friendship with Thor. Heimdall, I know you can see me. I need you to help me. Help me see. Rocket and Thor Odinson. There's something about a rabbit that just makes Thor open up. I shoot you on the captain, sir. You're very perceptive. You seem like a noble leader. Will you join me on my quest to Nivedalea? Let, let me just ask the captain. Oh, wait a second. It's me. Yeah, I'll go. Wonderful. Thor Odinson and Eric Selvig. Selvig is a lot more chill than we would be around the God of Thunder. Karun Patel and Kingo. We should all be so lucky to have friendships that last as long as theirs. May I say something? Please don't say anything. I think you should go. I just said don't say anything. Life affords no greater duty than to protect one's family. Remember, it's your favorite line from the Shadow Warrior 2. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Steve Rogers and James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes It's fair to say that this friendship has stood the test of time. Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes have known each other since at least the 1920s. Come on, man. Why well, last night? I gotta get you cleaned up. Why? Where are we going? The future. They've always looked out for each other, whether it was Bucky taking care of Steve after his mom died, or Steve bringing Bucky back from the brink. Your name is James Buchanan Barnes. Shut up! I'm not gonna fight you. These two are with each other to the end of the line. Theirs is the kind of bromance that many guys aspire to and a certain section of the fandom believes it's romantic. Can I miss you, buddy? It's gonna be okay, Buck. You know who you are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.